My name is uh, Dan, and with Emily, uh, we are Rambling Ambition. And if you want to see how we install these um, six uh, lithium batteries into our van, uh, stick around for the video. If you're new to our channel, uh, we are upfitting our 2019 Sprinter van, which used to be an Amazon delivery van. We have a bunch of videos um, kind of going through that process. Uh, we just finished putting in the water system and doing the plumbing, and we've been working on our wiring. And we're finally at a stage now where we're ready to uh, connect all the batteries. So like I said, if this is something you're interested in, please stick around for the video. All right, so we got the uh, battery tray and I'm gonna be securing each battery uh, individually. Um, that way that they will not move. And all I did was I put some cargo straps and I ran them underneath the board and then underneath uh, this support. So there'll be six 12 volt batteries on that tray. All right, so we're gonna um, put the batteries in now and get them situated. All right, what you're looking at is 630 amp hours of lithium batteries. So these are the Lion Energy uh, UT1300s. We've had good experience with these batteries in the past and uh, we're gonna use them in this application. So uh, they're a great battery. They come from a good company. They have a good warranty and um, they're uh, going to provide us with all the power we need uh, for the van so all right we're going to connect these batteries into parallel um, to give us a 12 volt uh, battery bank that's got uh, 630 amp hours now these batteries are 105 amp hours each and so if you run them in parallel the voltage stays the same but the amps are what are compounded so in this case we'll uh, have 630 amp hours of 12 volt power. They will all be connected in parallel by these four watt cables that I made up. So these are all 516 slugs, four watt cable with heat shrink, and we'll connect all the negatives together and all the positives. And then they'll be on one end of the battery bank, the um, negative cable will come out and on the other end of the battery bank, the positive cable will come off. Uh, just to make sure that the battery charges and draws evenly. Um, so you don't want to have um, the positive and the negative coming off of the same end of the battery bank because it's going to pull from that first battery down and then the other batteries are kind of going to feed it. So you want to pull the current uh, through all of the batteries. So we're getting ready to measure our main battery cables. They both have to be the same length. Um, so the positive cable and the negative cable will have to be the same length. Uh, so we're going to measure that and those are going to connect up to the link shunt. Um, so the power goes through that shunt and into the distribution network. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, we made our cables up. This is going to go um, from the links uh, shunt to the battery switch. This will go from the battery switch to the batteries. So we have the ability to cut the system off. And then this is gonna be our ground cable. We got one more ground cable to connect. And now will run from the distributor uh, down to the ground bar. So um, let's start putting everything together. We're gonna to start by uh, doing the negative side first and uh, we'll start running all of the cables on the batteries.
All right, so we got um, a lot of the wiring done and we made up um, some short cables uh, with some ferrules and male and female uh, connectors to jump out of the bottom of the switch. So we'll go ahead and put those in. Black goes up into the negative. Just so you guys have an overview of kind of where we're at, we got the switch wired. So that's from, these are the cables that come from the top of the, the van. And then we go through our switch and then into the solar charge controller. From the solar charge controller over to the distributor. So I got all the fuses and um, the cables are kind of a mess right now because I haven't got any of the cable management stuff set. Uh, so I'm just trying to get everything wired. So we'll put those fuses in and I'll kind of show you how we do that. So we use uh, mega fuses uh, for all the things within the Lynx distributor. And so I got all the cables run the other night. And basically, everything is set up the same way where you have a nut, a washer, and a lock washer. And since uh, the charge controller only puts out 50 amps, we'll be using a 60 amp fuse. And like I've done on the rest is we just wipe that with some alcohol to clean it off put the fuse down first and then we'll do the positive cable same thing clean it off and place that on so the fuse goes between the bus bar and the positive terminal and then the wire goes on top that way if it blows it disconnects that circuit and then we just tighten them down so just to show you this is a 400 amp fuse this is going to be for the power feeds going to the uh, inverter this will be a ground uh, that goes back to the case on the multi plus um, this is a this setup is for one of the uh, fuse blocks it's a hundred amp uh, fuse because the fuse blocks holds a hundred amp so I needed a second hundred amp fuse that just came in the mail today um, and that will feed that part and then these two are from the Orion DC to DC chargers and they both will get a 60 amp fuse as well so um, we'll go ahead and put those in real quick. All right, so we have a 60 amp fuse for the solar controller, a 400 amp fuse for the battery, 100 amps for the distribution panel down here in the garage, 100 amps for the distribution, DC distribution up in uh, the main part of the van. And then the two DC to DC chargers both have 60 amp uh, fuses on them. Then we got these two right here, which will be open if we need to do any kind of expansion or anything like that, so. All right, so we got the batteries all installed. The distributors are all wired and connected. Our connections to the shunt. All of our battery cables to the inverter are done. Solar charge controllers the isolator, battery switch, temperature leads, everything. So this is gonna get a frame up over top of it so nothing runs into it. But all we have left is the brains of this and that's the Servo GX and it's gonna go right up there on the shelf. So we're gonna do that another day because I think you guys would enjoy understanding what everything that does. All right, so that was a long night in the cold um getting all that stuff done so it takes uh, quite a while to manage all the cables to get all the batteries hooked up but 
uh, the last little pieces of the uh, electrical system are done. All we have to do is add in the Servo GX and then wire the panels up on the inside of the van and uh, we'll have power. So I'm uh, pretty excited about that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I didn't go into detail on how I kind of made the cables because it's basically you cut them to size, um, crimp them. And I showed you the tools that we were using already and um, it's just kind of putting them where the connectors are. So I showed you where we did all the fuses for the um, Lynx distributors and what that's all about. And uh, so uh, the next video will most likely finish up our plumbing where we install uh, the countertop and the sink. And then uh, we'll do one on the servo itself uh, so that you can see all the data once we power everything up and kind of understand what that whole system is like. So. This is Dan from uh, Rambling Ambition, and uh, we'll see you on the next uh, day in the van.